The lymphatic system. Lymphatic organs and glands. Let's use this diagram to describe the major organs, glands, and vessels. In the head and neck region, there are three different types of tonsils. The thymus gland and the spleen. There are collections of lymph nodes or groups throughout the body. The cervical lymph nodes, axillary lymph nodes, lumbar lymph nodes, pelvic and inguinal lymph nodes. The lymphatic vessels travel through the body including the upper and lower limbs. And the major ducts are the left lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct. The lymphatic system along with the immune system delivers lymphocytes to different regions of the body. And these cells function to protect against invading microorganisms. The lymphatic vessels in the body transport lymph fluid to the different organs and glands of this system. The developmental anatomy of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is derived from the mesoderm during embryogenesis. Lymph vessel formation is connected to and develops with blood vessel formation. By the seventh week of development, there are lymph sacs that become connected to the venous system. The thymus gland and spleen are formed by the eighth week of development. The thymus gland forms from cells of the third pharyngeal pouch, and at birth, the thymus gland takes up the majority of the anterior mediastinal space. The capillaries of the lymphatic system are closely associated with the capillaries of the cardiovascular system. The lymph capillaries are larger and are structured to allow the collection of lymph fluid. The wall of the lymphatic capillary is made up of endothelial cells, and similar to certain veins, capillaries in the lymphatic system permit one-way flow of fluid due to their unique structure which acts like a valve. Eventually, the lymphatic capillary becomes the afferent lymphatic vessel at the lymph node. The arrows in this image indicate the flow of fluid into the lymph capillaries from the tissue space. What are the functions of the lymphatic system? There are three primary functions of this system. Number one is the production and distribution of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are produced within the lymphoid organs such as the spleen and thymus. Foreign antigens are typically taken up in the tissues and delivered to the lymph nodes. Then, Immature lymphocytes can be exposed to these antigens and develop into mature functional lymphocytes. The second major function is the maintenance of blood volume. Fluid that leaves blood capillaries becomes interstitial fluid. The lymphatic vessels then return fluid from the extracellular space to the bloodstream. The third primary function is the provision of an alternate route for the transport of hormones and nutrients. For example, Lipids are absorbed from the intestines and they can be delivered to the bloodstream through the lymphatic system. The formation of lymph fluid. Fluid that's been exchanged and driven out of the blood capillaries is now interstitial fluid. This fluid in turn exchanges with the cells of the body. Lymph, which is originally tissue fluid, is collected in the lymphatic vessels and ultimately transported back to the systemic circulation by pressure in the tissue skeletal muscle activity, and a series of one-way valves in the lymphatic vessels themselves. Lymph vessels collect lymphatic fluid along with escaped red blood cells from the interstitial space. The fluid itself is made up of number one, fluid from the intestines which can contain proteins and fats, number two, a few red blood cells, and number three, many lymphocytes. Lymph fluid can also contain bacteria which can lead to the activation of the immune system through presentation to lymphocytes by specialized antigen-presenting cells. The following is a clinical note on infected lymphoid nodules. Infected lymphoid nodules involve a large pathogenic invasion that's accompanied with pain, swelling, and infection. Examples of this type of infection include tonsillitis and appendicitis. In the case of tonsillitis, the infection can lead to an abscess 
and usually causes pain or sore throat and fever. When antibiotics fail to control repeat infections or when there's a formation of an abscess, surgical removal or tonsillectomy of the tonsils may be required. Another common form of infected lymphoid nodules that can require surgical intervention is appendicitis. Infection of the appendix attached to the cecum can lead to the erosion of the epithelial lining and ulceration of the appendix itself. A swollen and inflamed appendix may rupture or perforate and this can lead to widespread infection in the peritoneal cavity. The structure of the lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels range in size from the lymph capillaries to the large diameter collecting vessels that are known as lymphatic ducts. The lymphatic capillaries are larger than blood capillaries and they have a thinner wall but they do not have a continuous basal lamina. The valve of the lymphatic capillary is made up of endothelial cells that overlap at one end of the vessel. There are certain regions in the body that contain numerous lymphatic capillaries, such as the connective tissue which is deep to the dermis, the mucosa layer of the digestive tract, and in the small intestine. Lymphatic Vessel Distribution the lymphatic vessels of the body are divided into the superficial lymphatics and the deep lymphatics. The superficial lymphatic vessels follow the path of the superficial veins and are located deep to the dermis lining of the digestive tract, respiratory, urinary, and reproductive tracts. The deep lymphatic vessels accompany the deep arteries and veins of the body. In the thoracic region of the body, the lymphatics form large ducts. On the right side of the body, the right lymphatic duct collects lymph from this side of the body above the level of the diaphragm. This vessel delivers a lymph into the venous system at or near the junction between the right internal jugular vein and the right subclavian vein. On the left side of the body, the thoracic duct collects lymph from the left side of the body and the right side below the diaphragm. The thoracic duct delivers a lymph into the venous system at the junction between the left subclavian vein and the left internal jugular vein. 